Good day, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on firewall basics. Today I'm going to discuss types of firewalls, and then we're going to move on to firewall settings and techniques. I have a whole plethora of information to impart, not a whole lot of time, so let's go ahead and jump into today's session. Of course, I'm going to start with types of firewalls. First up are host-based firewalls. These are installed at the node, which is usually a desktop computer. They're often used in conjunction with network-based firewalls. Now, host-based firewalls are always software applications. Then there are network-based firewalls. Usually these are implemented on the perimeter of the network segment that needs the protection. They're used to protect private networks from public or outside networks. Network-based firewalls can be a network appliance, which means that it was specially designed and deployed to provide only firewall services, or it can be a software application, either as part of the router's operating system or as a specialty application on a server that is providing some routing function. It's time to move on to small office, home office firewalls. In most cases, the network firewall is provided by a wide area network connection device. So most often the main firewall is provided by the DSL modem or the cable modem. In conjunction with this, a host-based firewall is often used with the network-based firewall. This provides a little bit more protection and it allows for more granular configuration of the firewall protection part of network security. There are stateless inspection firewalls. These examine all the packets either entering or leaving the network. It examines these packets against a set of rules. This set of rules is called an access control list or ACL. The ACL rules are defined as static values by an administrator. As I stated, all of the packets are examined against the rules in the ACL, starting with the first rule. If a packet matches a rule, that rule is enforced and then the ACL is exited. Stateless inspection firewalls do not care about the state of the connection. They only care about the packets and all packets are examined. Then there are stateful inspection firewalls. A stateful inspection firewall doesn't really care about the packets, it only cares about the state of a connection between two endpoints. As a general rule, connections are not allowed to be made from outside of the local network segment to the local network segment being protected. Only the initial packets going from inside the network to a destination outside of the network are inspected against an ACL. If the ACL allows those packets to leave the network and a connection is made, or once the connection has been established, the firewall only monitors the state of that connection. It allows the free flow of packets between the inside node and the outside destination as long as the state of the connection remains valid. There are application-aware firewalls. These are firewalls that not only examine the packets, but also the application protocol that is being used. So it knows if it's FTP or HTTP that's being used. Application-aware firewalls make allow or deny decisions based on the application layer protocol as well as other ACL rules. They are slower but more thorough in protecting the private network than firewalls that are not application aware. There are also context aware firewalls. These are firewalls that can identify not only applications but also users and or devices. This is the context of the traffic. So context aware firewalls can be used to restrict or allow traffic based on the context as well as other ACL rules. Then there are unified threat management devices or UTM devices. These are network appliances that include not only a firewall service but other services as well. Usually intrusion detection services or intrusion prevention services. One concern with a UTM device is that it can create a single point of failure in the network. 
What happens to the network if that UTM device fails? Is your security gone or does the network go down? That is a concern about using a UTM. Most often firewalls are implemented on a router's interface or at the host level. When implemented on the router interface, the firewall takes part in the routing process. When implemented at the host level, the firewall protects the host on which it resides. There is an exception to these scenarios, and it's the implementation of a virtual wire firewall. This type of firewall is a network-based firewall that resides between two devices and provides neither routing nor switching functions. It contains two interfaces, and as traffic passes between those interfaces, the packets are compared to an ACL. But it's usually not used to protect a specific host, and it does not take part in the routing function. It's time to proceed with firewall settings and techniques. First up is the ACL. Each firewall interface may have two ACLs associated with it an inbound ACL and an outbound ACL. The inbound ACL examines all packets inbound on that interface. An outbound ACL examines all packets outbound on that interface. The ACL contains a set of administrator defined rules that either allow or deny packet traffic. Rules can be based on such criteria as source or destination, IP address, MAC address, protocol, and time of day. When an ACL examined packets, those packets are examined against the set of rules from top to bottom. Once a rule is matched, as in deny FTP packets from leaving the network, that rule is enforced and the ACL is exited. The last rule of any ACL is an implicit deny. That means if the packet being evaluated does not match any of the explicit rules of the ACL, the implicit deny is enacted and the packet is blocked. Care and caution should be used whenever creating an ACL, if nothing else because that implicit deny statement ends every ACL list. You may end up blocking traffic that you did not intend to block. It's time to discuss firewall placement and we're going to begin with perimeter placement. This requires that the firewall be placed at the outside edge, usually at the wide area network connection, of the local segment or the LAN segment. Stateful inspection firewalls work well on the perimeter. They are usually slower to make the initial connection, but once that connection is achieved, they offer better performance. You could have internal placement of your firewall. This requires that the firewall be placed in a logical central location. It's usually used to route between different internal private networks. Stateless inspection firewalls work well for internal placement. They are faster to make connections and require less memory. A DMZ or demilitarized zone requires a special configuration or placement considerations for your firewalls. The DMZ is a specific area that is created, usually between two firewalls, that allows outside access to network resources while the internal network is still protected from outside traffic. You should consider using a DMZ if you're going to have a web server on your network. Outside users will need to access your web server, which is on your network, but your internal network still needs to be protected from malicious traffic. The external facing router allows specific outside traffic into the DMZ, while the internal router prevents that same outside traffic from entering the internal network. That concludes this session on firewall basics. I talked about types of firewalls, and then we ended with firewall settings and techniques. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I hope to do another one soon.